Okay, I think we can get started. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Digitalization and Automation of Tank Inspection with Falco. We have a very special guest today with us, uh, Milo from Falco. He's going to um, uh, demo live uh, how he's been using the, the, um, the SDK to automate the workflow and contest capture. And I actually can't wait to see that, um, <laughs> your, your presentation, Milo. So uh, before uh, getting started, I just need to go through some housekeeping stuff. Um, I'm sorry for uh, those who are familiar with GoToWebinar, but um, just for, for those that join us for the first time, um, you have the control panel is very similar to the one you're seeing in my presentation right now. Um, with this orange arrow, you can collapse and expand the um, control panel. Um, three very easy settings that I want to explain. The um, You can join using your phone call. For some reason, if you can't use your computer, just clicking on phone call and then the audio, the dial in information, sorry, will be displayed there. Um, I've um, made available some uh, resources for you. It's a um, how to get started guide in contest capture for, uh, it might be useful for those who are not familiar with contest capture or they are just getting started. Um, so it's a PDF, you can download it from, um, from there on the handouts. Um, and then please keep asking questions. We wanna keep this webinar very um, engaging and live. So both Milo and I uh, appreciate any questions or feedbacks and we will, um, read them throughout the webinar. Um, what else I have to say, uh, we will send the recording of the webinar uh, to all of you after um, after the webinar. There is also going to be a blog post with the um, success story from Milo. Um, so I will send that as well together with the recording of the webinar. And uh, please take a couple of minutes to complete the survey after the as, as you leave the, the call. I know it's um, you know, it's a lot to ask, but it's going to take you there's only five questions. And it's really the only way we have to to make these events more um, engaging and, and meaningful for you guys. Um, and stay tuned for more webinars. You you see me that we are very active with, um, you know, trying to bring the best stories uh, to you guys. So stay tuned. We'll, we'll be um, announcing upcoming webinars on LinkedIn and other social media. OK, so let's get started. Um, well, most of you know me, I'm Alicia, product sales engineer at Virtuosity, and we have today Milo, as I mentioned today. And Milo, do you want to introduce yourself and tell us a bit more about uh, you, your role in Falker, and maybe about Falker as well, just for the people that are not familiar, familiar with the company? Yeah, sure. Uh, hi, I'm uh, Milo Buola. I'm, uh, yeah, I said I'm a data specialist, but uh, we'll have to find out. Um, I work at Falker for uh, for two years. I've been studying artificial intelligence uh, as my bachelor, and I did uh, game and media technology uh, as my master's. And now I do I, I handle all the two D and three D data that enters Falker, and I process it accordingly. And I also do some um, yeah, so ge geometric analysis of uh, of the in this case tanks we inspect um, and the bit volumes of the tanks. So I I do uh, all kinds of uh, yeah, data stuff within Falker. So yeah, that's great. And um, tell us a bit more about Falker. Um, I'm actually. Do you want me to hand the presentation over to you, or? Yeah, sure. Yeah, if okay. I could. Um, uh, I will make this uh, quick. Hopefully, um, it's more about. Uh, I'll show my screen. Can I see uh, the presentation then? I think you you should be ready to go now to share your screen. Uh, or but you want the beautiful slides. I want oh. your slides. <laughs> That's true. That is so true. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry about this. Um, so okay. let me just make presenter again and continue with my presentation. That is my bad. <laughs> yeah, I have the slides. OK, go for it. Yeah, so um, what we do in short, just to give a background um, uh, on why all, we, yeah, all this is necessary. Falker, um, we help our clients with uh, the digital, a digital asset condition assessment for liquid bulk storage. And um, can I go to the next one? Yeah. Uh, just to give you some background, um, these 
uh, these tanks that store the, the crude oil are very old. <laughs> they were built in the in the 60s and uh, up to the 80s. So um, what we want to do or what they wanted to do is instead of making new tanks, they just want to maintain them better. Um, um, and there's another there's another thing. So the the government is increasing the uh, the requirements for the maintenance. So it's it's more rigid, and so we do have to do a better job uh, each year of uh, of maintaining the tanks. What there's not a problem. Hmm? Yeah, sure. Sorry, I was gonna ask, what does this inspection require? So what are these requirements that the government is asking? I know you guys use drones and you create um, a 3D model, although it's not a complete 3D model, so you are probably looking after yeah. specific. So this is more like the 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 health of the tank in general. So if, mm -hmm. if there's corrosion, we need to be able to uh, detect it and say what kind of corrosion there is. Mm, if there are any uh, um, faults with with the roof, if it's a, if it's a floating roof, so the roof floats on top of the um, um, of, of the product. Mm -hmm. If there are any um, leakages, for instance, gas leakages, or if there's anything um, um, outdated, or if there's anything, um, um, if there are cracks, any or anything like yeah. that, mm -hmm. and any anomalies, we have to, um, or the inspector has to make sure that they are um, fixed as soon as possible. So there, there are multiple, um, yeah, checklists and multiple stages of. Um, of this uh, assessment, mm -hmm. uh, um, yeah. So it's, it in, it is in general. Generally, it's the health of the tank that needs to be okay. maintained. Um, so yeah, uh, another problem is that the workforce, the operators, and the inspectors they are all aging. So this isn't the most pleasant job. Uh, one part of the job is uh, if, if 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 there's a leakage, they have to smell if there's a leakage, right? Uh, open a manhole, check if something in, in there. It's, um, well, not the most fun job and young people aren't uh, really attracted to it. Yeah. So um, all this are uh, uh, create some uh, challenges. Mm -hmm. And can I go to the next slide by clicking? Yeah. Um, bottom line, um, we want to do more inspections with less people. Um, that's that's the goal. That's what this slide uh, says in a nutshell. So how do we do it? Uh, we digitalize the inspection and the asset integration assessment and the monitoring. Fancy words, we digitalize everything. We make sure that uh, the inspector doesn't have to go from tank to tank. We have everything in a portal. Um, where they can see images and we, uh, through some smart filtering and some AI um, assisting, we make sure that they can um, inspect critical parts, critical components of the tank faster. So and, as if they main, were, um, and as if they were in the fields, basically. So the data yeah. you provide is, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, we offer different kinds of software and services. Uh, the software solutions are this this portal I'm talking about. There's a there's a, a uh, an operator that uses a tablet in the field, and we have an application for that. We have artificial intelligence to support um, uh, finding these anomalies. Uh, we have sens sensor data um, uh, system um, software, um, and we have all these uh, different kind of services like drone inspection, data processing. Um, um, implementing software and you also have a, an autonomous um, implementation which is uh, Percepto and now now it becomes interesting for our story we also have um, because we're making a digital twin we use subcontractors to uh, to help us uh, with this um, such as uh, lace scanning companies we have a separate 3d modeling uh, companies who help us uh, build the tank but we aid them <laughs> uh, by providing data um, non-destructive, um, so we're there, uh, entity, non-destructive testing, yeah, gas emission analysis, and we do the, um, the integrity, the tank inspection 
uh, as well. And that's the EMUA. Okay, so that's some background uh, as well. And this is the workflow um, where, where I come in. So there's the data capturing, uh, data capturing um, department, which are the, um, the drone guys who make the, the beautiful images, um, um, images for either the inspection itself or images to generate um, a good uh, point cloud or 3D model. Um, so those are um, those can be separate flights. They can be uh, a single flight. I use that data in the second component or the second. Um, you see my mouse? Yes. The second uh, step in this process. Um, I do some photo stitching, so the photogrammetry part with context capture. Uh, that is sent back to the modelers, and the modelers send back uh, a, a full digital twin model of the tank in this case. Um, and we do all, all other uh, data processing steps here. And that goes to the human inspector, and he continues in the portal and uh, does the inspection, et cetera. Um, so the really the interesting part for us here is the is the data processing, and uh, that's what what we'll be um, focusing on next. So I think now it's a good time to uh, for me to share my screen. Okay, I think you are presenter now. Yeah. All right. So what I will do, I will uh, I just live. Yes, I'm on I can it. see okay. your screen now. Yes. Um, I will um, go to a remote uh, desktop, which is uh, next to me, which has a bit more processing power. And uh, as we all know, uh, that's something we really need. Um, I just want to make this. Oh, yeah. I still see my. Uh, yes, I can see now contest capture. Yeah, super. I just hope to. Um, yeah, I feel minimize the taskbar real quick. This is this is brighter. This is brighter. And compromise the device. Okay. And hopefully, hopefully it, go, it will go away. Okay, so um, this is a typical um, flight for a roof inspection, for a, um, to generate a, a point cloud of a roof. Um, and in, in, uh, in short, this is what we, what, what we end up. And all this we do automatically, and uh, so it's a bulk, um, process. Multiple roofs are uh, processed with very uh, little manual labor on my side. So how many so how is, many roofs would you yeah, have in, yeah, in one project, yeah, uh, Milo? Yeah. Well, um, it depends on the on the client. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, a, different clients, for instance. Um, let me check. Some clients have 40 tanks. Okay. No, just, just an idea. I don't no need to go yeah, yeah. in detail. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Okay. So some clients have 40 tanks. Uh, another client has uh, like 100 tanks. Okay. Uh, different types of tanks. Um, so, yeah, those are the numbers. Okay. And, um, um, sorry, do you, um, sorry to interrupt. There's a question here coming in from James. What drones do you use and what flight planning software? if any um we use um we have two drones we have the m210 r2k um and we have the phantom 4 r2k mm -hmm. and um yeah we're really um yeah fond of the r2k of the latest uh, uh the second version r2k mm -hmm. so that's what we use yeah okay and the flight planning um is there any yeah, flight planning yeah. Yes. Um, uh, we're working with a company called DroneLink. Mm -hmm. um, these these simpler um, uh, flight plans are done within the DJI app uh, itself, but um, we use DroneLink for the more more advanced uh, flights. 
Mm -hmm. um, uh, let me see if I can show you the. I haven't processed this yet, but what you can see is that uh, we have like a, a thousand images, and this flight um, is done using, um, yeah, drone link. And it has some really advanced uh, methods of, of chaining separate flight paths. And also, um, yeah, that's pretty much the. Uh, there are more there are more um yeah what's the word flexible uh, in the word yeah. yeah 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 they really improve uh of the the flight itself so mm. instead of instead of uh, we went from six hours to like two and then from two hours we're we're almost to uh 45 minutes oh wow for one single tongue okay. yeah so we're really improving uh, on that uh mainly because of their software and we can all we're also working with them <laughs> on the software yeah so we have a developer working with them to improve uh yeah their software as that's, well that's really but amazing that's really you went uh, from six hours per tank to 45 minutes so that's so incredible hard. yeah yeah you have to realize because um you have to fly around the tanks in uh in yeah, uh, in different at different heights right mm -hmm. to get a full image of the tank if you if you want that um and for the roof it's less of a problem mm -hmm. but um for the full tank inspection yeah. Yeah. um yeah uh, different yeah. heights different angles of the camera so we used to do it like <laughs> one row at a time mm -hmm. uh, but with this uh, advanced software we're able to do it instead of yeah multiple yeah. Uh, rounds around it um yeah it, it goes up and down and and gets the right uh desired angles for the high priority points yeah. and then continues around the tank once really so cool. you don't have to run yeah. run around yourself as well that's really uh really nice mm -hmm. yeah a great benefit yeah so yeah that's what we use yeah yeah our um, time. so that's yeah 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 yeah. Uh, yeah and yeah. this is more like an inspection flight you saw the other flight that was more yeah, uh, yeah. focused okay. on generating yeah. a roof and mm -hmm. this flight was uh, focused on the inspection itself, uh, but this, this we also thing. have enough data here to to generate um, the entire roof as well. Um, yeah, yeah. But, but the, the the annoying things of tanks is that they have large white surfaces, and um, we have to be really close, uh, up close um, of the tank. So that 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 means that. Um, it's really almost impossible to get a good full um, model based on photogrammetry alone. So what we do, we use lasers. We use laser scans of yeah, the size yeah. of the tank. And we use photogrammetry uh, point clouds of the top of the tank, and the modelers can use those both to generate a, um, a digital twin. Uh -huh. So yeah. Um, so well within context capture in the in the desktop we. Yeah, we do. I do the, ma yeah, the yeah. manual processing. So if I want to process one tank, um, it's almost um, always faster to do it just here, no. just click, and uh, you know it goes really fast to do the yeah, yeah the, 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 the 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 processing through this thing. But um, as soon as it's more like three, four. Uh, roofs I have to generate, then I switch over to my um, pro program I've written in um, in Python. So maybe it's interesting to start uh, talking about that next. Okay, sounds good. Do you want me to launch uh, the poll? Yeah. Okay, please. Um, so we want to ask you guys because uh, Milo is going to talk now about uh, Python and how he coded the, um, you know, the automation in the SDK. And so we want to ask you uh, about, um, you know, how familiar are you with Python scripting, so that, um, uh, you know, we can, we can, <laughs> we can. I'm actually not at all familiar, so um, you know, just kind of, kind of like uh, assess what's the familiarity in the audience. So we, we will just adapt the, <laughs> hopefully, the, 
the, the language that we use. Uh, so we are collecting responses at the moment. Uh, we have, um, yeah, very few people familiar. I'll, I'll show this with you now um, as soon as I close it. Let's give it another few seconds. Yeah, so that's everyone. Um, so let me share this. Oh, you're actually sharing the screen. So basically 10% are very familiar. And then we have 30% somewhat familiar, 30% not very familiar, and 30% not at all familiar. <laughs> so. <laughs> okay, nice distribution there. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Let me give you a quick... Uh, so the SDK itself, it's really, uh, um, it, it comes with, with samples. Yeah. Yeah. And for instance, this, this is the AutoMaster um, yeah. file, which comes with the SDK. Yeah. Yeah. So it does look uh, quite impressive if you haven't seen any code yet, but this will give, give you like 90% of what you need to start generating um, projects yourself. Mm -hmm. Let me show you what, uh, on a higher level, this is what's going on. I just made this real quick, so it's not perfect, but, but um, you have your input, you have your processes, your process, uh, the, the, the Python code that, that runs the SDK and that runs uh, context yeah. capture, uh -huh. and they have some post-process steps. So for the input, of course, you need the folders in which you have the different flights, the image folders. Uh -huh. And you also need your process set. What kind of output do you want? Do you want um, point cloud? Do you want to have a, 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 a 3D model, etc. Everything um, is possible based on the SDK, which you have to know it upfront. And multiple uh, options, of course, are also. Um, uh -huh. um, can you also? Uh, if, what if are you actually using contour points? I don't think you do. But could you include this in in this process? Yeah. So, um, uh, what's the word again? The there are three mm -hmm. types of uh, ground control points, right? The um, QR codes, mm -hmm. and there are the other two. I don't know one uh, again. Yes, the um, I, I always forget the name. The, the new ones yeah. that are less uh, dependable dependable on the on the scale. Um, yeah, can't recall the name, but anyways. You might have them there. Um, tools, create targets, QR codes. Yeah, so you have the April tags and you have the Chile tags. So the April tags are. Um, this is, this is the uh, you can use the April tags to um, detect them automatically and um, yeah, process your um, your model with the ground control points. Um, we don't use them because we don't really need the high accuracy, um, but we are um, doing a new um, test with this workflow with, uh, with um, ground control points, in, in this case, the April tags. But for now, we don't, I don't really know um, enough to teach you anything about it. Yeah, but okay. uh, it is possible mm -hmm. um, using the April tags mm -hmm. for the, uh, the, the typical flight that we're doing right now. Okay. So you have to read up uh, on it. Um, so yeah, getting back to this, uh, you also have to uh, tell which uh, coordinate system you want your output to be in. Um, and once you have all this data, really um, these are just variables which you give to the, yeah, the Python program. And then um, you wait until the, the program has finished. So context capture generates uh, your models. It's in the output folder. And that output folder um, really is your, your finished product. But I would like to have them right in the shared file location of, of our uh, modelers. So that's why you have some processing, post-processing uh, steps as well. So this is high level. Mm -hmm. Now I'm yeah. um, first showing a bit of the code. 
So who hasn't seen a um, well code ever? Um, this is a bit overwhelming, but in general, you're, you're creating functions or separate pieces of code that you run or uh, um, step by step, one at a time. So what you first want to do is you want to have um, a piece of code that gets your image files in the correct folder. So in, in my case, I have a, um, oh, this is the output folder, sorry. This is the output folder. I have a a set of input folders in which my flight data is. So all these images are here. And um, this is just a, a sample set. I need to get this data in the, um, in the program. Uh, I use a parser, so you can um, use a command line <laughs> to run it all. Um, but um, for each client, uh, in, in, in my case, we have, we have different clients and I want to process. So, so the data comes in client per client. So the bulk, the, the max level of um, bulk processing I get is based on, um, on, a per, on a per client basis and a client is a tenant. So I would, I would like to know the tenant name and all these subdirectories are all the same. So in this case, the client is Falker. <laughs> we are, we are self our clients. And in the, um, in the main part of the program, I get all the types of uh, variables I want. So in the, and please feel free to ask any questions uh, in between. If I, I go actually, too fast. Yeah, I have a question actually, um, because I know, I know you did this all by yourself, right? Like yeah. all the coding. I think what well, is more of a remark uh, rather than a question, but I think we now provide actually not sure about how many, but I think we provide or we we, we can provide with like the and, um, scripts yeah. for, you know, image um, upload and things like that. So that would be also something yeah. that you can yeah. easily replicate, but right? If you have the like the, the piece of code that you use for yeah. uploading images would be the same. You just need to change the file path, mm -hmm. I imagine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so you want, if you want it a bit more uh, robust, so, but, you're saying you guys can offer the, yeah, the code so the, as well? Yeah, so James uh, confirmed this, that there are some example scripts in the delivered okay. installation. Um, yeah. uh, so that there, there are some scripts available for, for our customers. Um, so, so that's good. Because at least, yeah. you know, someone that has no, like me, <laughs> idea about yeah. coding in Python might be, as you said, might be really overwhelming to do this on, you know, from scratch. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's always good to have someone uh, beside you who does understand. But yeah. uh, like I said, the SDK provides samples. Yeah. yeah. So I use the auto master, which is like generate from A to Z a, um, a model. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, fully automatic. Yeah. But you just have to give it the right um, directory where it can find the images of your, uh, your flight images. But as you can see, there are also, um, uh, there's an import um, program, um, which gives you um, the foundation, the basis to um, import in an automatic way. So uh, I've used the reconstruction settings, for instance, and integrated it in the auto master to give it some um, different different options. For instance, I want uh, sometimes we want a low quality model, and sometimes we want a really high quality model. So, so then you have to dig a little deeper into the, the settings, and how to uh, use them. But um, context capture, you guys already provided um, 
uh, the necessary information in this document, which will help you to get uh, the desired um, uh, settings. settings and so you yeah, 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 parameters. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's good. So it's a bit, it's a bit of a of a puzzle, but it is. Yeah, like I said, 90 to 95, 95 to 100% is there, 95% yeah. is there. And I think you mentioned something which is in the use case, uh, something like, you know, you invested X amount of time to define your proper, yeah. you know, workflow, like the graph that you're showing. So input process, I guess that, that also having that in mind from a bigger, you know, point of view helps you to structure then the coding. Um, and then once you have that in place, which I, I can't remember how much, but I think you mentioned maybe eight hours of yeah. work, um, yeah, you know, yeah. that it took you to properly define and set up yeah. the, um, the the automation. And then afterwards you really see the benefit of it. Cause uh, yeah. and tell us more about yeah. this, like how, how much time do you save per projects? Yeah, exactly. So you really have to uh, balance it out. For me, um, for me it was, indeed eight hours to, to code this all approximately um, and we like we, we process uh, 200 tanks a year approximately mm -hmm. um, so what we first did before we even used context capture we didn't have a good um, um, as is representation of the roof we could have we have a laser scan of the sides but the roof was never visible so the modelers, they had to use 2D drawings of 1965 of, of the date of the tank. Um, 2D drawings, which said, oh yeah, there's a plate here uh, with this dimension. And, but they didn't have a, the correct orientation often. So we really had this back and forth between me um, and them, because I could overlay images on top of the model and see that um yeah there was and, um each, many there were many misalignments with each individual roof uh, plate orientation differed uh there were components missing so that was really a hassle so and then we started using context capture and then we had a good um as is representation of the roof so that made uh yeah the process um like six times faster instead of six days going back and forth and then finalizing that one tank we went to within the day um they could they could finalize the tank the sides and the and the roof um together uh but of course 200 tanks uh, is quite a lot so um so their their manual labels still essentially stayed the same but what i could do instead of um, generating one uh, roof point cloud within, let's say, um, I w at one time it took me like maybe five to 10 minutes to, to generate one tank and send it over to, the, uh, to them through a, a shared file. Mm -hmm. Now I could process these 20 or these 40 things um, for me with just like five to 10 minutes of, of doing some small adjustments in the code and then starting the process and then waiting uh, one or two days till the um, till the models were finished so the, the, we were using point clouds but um, that that saved me um, um, 10 times yeah so we did a, this little calculation it saved me uh, approximately um, um, in total it saved me about 24 right. hours of time and it saved them um, also with this back and forth, like like hundreds of hours of time. And, and potentially errors and, and you know, misinformation and, and these kind of things. I, I, I think this is very interesting that, you know, for the investment of, um, you know, a few hours to set up the process you have automated, yeah. you basically removed yourself from having to, um, you know, take the images, import the images, process the, yeah. the data, get in the 3D mesh. Um, so I, I think this is like a really good example of uh, uh, investing just a little bit of time, um, which it comes actually with, with context capture already. I, I, I wasn't fully aware of this. Um, uh, so, yeah. and and the return is is I think 
brilliant like yeah yeah it is uh plus it's for me it's more fun um um i love to explore uh context capture at the beginning but now i really yeah i understand it quite well mm. so this isn't a part of of my daily life that i want to be doing yeah. um too often especially for these 200 things upcoming years exactly it, but really it, is, it takes too much time yeah and it's it's, it's not only the fun that i see which i <laughs> <laughs> I respect that. <laughs> it's also the the fact that you can focus, you can invest your your hours, which cost to your employer a certain you know amount of money. So it's hours that you can invest in adding value to to really something else uh, than just clicking buttons in a in a software. So I think that's the real value of it. Um, is saving money is actually pro probably generating somehow um, uh, you know, an added value somewhere else in, in, within your uh, tasks and responsibilities. So I think that's that's really interesting. Um, and also the aspect of, uh, sorry, like removing the the possibility of mistakes and misinformation, like having the, um, you know, the machine doing the job is very is very um, the, the chances of errors are minimized. Yeah. Exactly, and that's what we're looking for uh, the most. We're really trying to streamline everything, uh, make it lean, and also, uh, yeah, reduce the uh, amount of errors. Mm. And once you have a, once you have settled or or um, figured out the path, uh, uh, the processing path, and the, the types of output you want, um, if you lay it out just in a single um, document. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you can just process each time the same so yeah, yeah. it's really a great benefit yeah 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 it's absolutely fantastic um how is it, sorry i'm jumping actually to a different topic so exactly. i don't know if you want to mention something exactly. else about this but, but they, i want no, to ask you uh, what is the uh, what is the final deliverable that you present to your customers the, or what, what's what's the what's the what do, where are you providing to your customers in terms of do you do the inspection or do you do just the 3d modeling or do you do a report or um oh yeah um we do um all of those things we do the inspection ourselves um exactly yeah all of those things you said so um let me let me, let me give you a uh let me give you an example. Yeah, that would be great to see it in of what the final product is. If it's, uh, oh, okay, I have to go to Google. <laughs> so this is the portal. Um, yeah, it really doesn't matter. Yeah. And we have technology as well. Okay. So what you see here is that anyway, yeah. Um, there is a three D model, a cat model, uh, behind or in front, depends on how you look at it, uh, an image. A photo so if i were to uh, find a um a bit of an anomaly yeah, a, a corrosion or anything uh on the or, or no, let, let me uh, rephrase if i'm an inspector and the next part in the inspection is the platform then now i can select this component of the platform and I can find all images that are also where the platform is also visible. Mm, that are associated to that specific point. Yeah, and, mm -hmm. and now I can uh, inspect this uh, or these images more, um, more up close. Mm -hmm. One by one. Um, one by one or, uh, and, and we also have this, um, yeah, to I haven't shown it here, but, but this is a bit uh, overexposed, this image. So that's not going to give you lots of information, uh, I reckon. But uh, here you can see clearly there's there's some um, corrosion here. Um, and in a new set, I haven't given you the latest set, uh, we have images way, way, way more up close and of different angles. 
So um, this is what the inspector sees and uh, uses. Let me see if I can back up. So to, you basically um, build like, the inspection yeah, report in here. Uh, and so that's, yeah. that's what your, so your customer will log yeah. into this platform. Oh, um, sorry, they yeah. have the as builds model, they have the up-to-date pictures and the, exactly. the inspection from, uh, you know, from that uh, going through the images yeah, or whatever and, and highlighting the different yeah, anomalies. Yeah. Exactly. And, and really, it's, it's, this portal is really uh, focused on the inspector and on the inspection checklist he mm -hmm. uses and on the, um, the requirements yeah. of those things, like, like the standards yeah. of, this, yeah. of the checklist. Are you using any, so, yeah. so for when it comes to the inspection of the pictures, are you using any um, uh, artificial intelligence to identify anomalies or how, how do you do the anomaly identification? Yeah. So, um, um, what he means by that actually is let me get back to the... Yeah, yeah. so if they have to create cells, they have cells. So, so they actually yeah. use the... Uh, on this image, you can see um, spots mm -hmm. where the attention of the inspector is drawn to. So mm -hmm. this, these are automatically uh, generated uh, pixels, so okay. these, these uh, colors. Mm -hmm. And That's what's in my email, right? these are really um, the giving the inspector um, a focus point mm -hmm. on where to look. Sure. And we also have some other analysis uh, uh, tools that, that shows where are the highest concentration of um, of corrosion so that the yeah. inspector can look at those first. Okay. Um, but here are, um, yeah, it's maybe not very clear. I don't know how you guys see it, but the, when you there are spots riding up. That show um, artificial intelligence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I, I, uh, so, I can so see that. Yeah. So this is the where I explained. And uh, another question we have: um, What is the ground sample distance uh, you acquire, acquire on the tank to perform the inspection? So what is the, the ground sample distance of the pictures? Oh, the ground sample distance. Mm -hmm. um, they actually want. Really, we're not we're not using ground sample distance. Um, um, so if that means they have as a, as a measure, so I know you, mm -hmm. you use ground sampling distance. Um, um, if you want to generate your model, yeah. um, to, uh, for the for the resolution, but really the uh, the, um, the the point cloud that we generate. Yeah, I would say add a column here and call. These yeah, I think it point. has a ground sampling distance of one and a half centimeters per pixel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and that is used by the modelers just to make a as is model, just to get these uh, plates aligned as, as good as possible. Yeah. So, so for the inspector, the ground sampling distance isn't really the the the, um, the key or or the measure of no, the exactly. yeah. yeah it's yeah. not not very interesting for them. Mm -hmm. um, and we're not doing any uh, volume uh, measurement in this inspection mm -hmm. uh, portal. But for me, when I do a uh, pit, vo uh, pit volume analysis, mm -hmm. yeah. the tank itself is is based inside of a pit um, with, with with dikes, so that mm -hmm. if the fl if the tank breaks, then the fluid that comes out s stays within this pit and doesn't go into the environment. Yeah. When I when when we do those analysis, then ground sampling distance really is oh. uh, more important because that means that you also have a a, a lower error. Yeah. Or a higher accuracy of your model, um, so really, it's not um, very interesting in this case. Yeah, in yeah, this, yeah. In I, I understand. Yeah. Um, so you've you've um, okay. you've kind of like quantified the the okay. optimization from like the data okay. acquisition. You went uh, from like six hours yeah, so to forty five minutes for each it? tank. Um, you, you've also quantified the um, uh, I think was it like ten or twenty minutes per. Uh, for like the image processing, so like the, you clicking yeah. uh, on yeah. every tank. Uh, so um, have you also somehow quantify the the time that you save by using artificial intelligence in the image identification? Um, no, that's a bit more difficult. Mm -hmm. And really, 
um, Falker is a young company, so um, we're we're setting it up in a way that if you look again next year in the same inspection, then you have the data of the previous year. So that's yeah. that's the moment where you can start. Really measure, uh, yeah, yeah. Getting some real data, yeah. Okay. So we're 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 gonna have to wait for that one. So we'll have to do it another one. Like we'll have to do another webinar next yeah. <laughs> next year. That's yeah. perfect. But like, no, I was like, my like, it's really interesting because like I think the you know just by uh, this little like the SDK and also by using this drone link uh, and data acquisition okay. tool and, you mentioned um, before, um, like uh, you, yeah, you're so, um, you're uh, like massively possible. improving um, the the process of the inspection and yeah. I I will be really um, curious to see you know how much time and also um. You know, again, once again, is the minimizing the the human error components because that's that's what artificial intelligence is helping you do here. It's just drawing the attention yeah. of you to the right places. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think this is this is really impressive. Really yeah, and it's something it uh, we really want to explore ourselves yeah. as well. And mm -hmm. um, I, I mentioned it briefly. We have uh, th there's this um, um, uh, company that, that does auto uh, autonomous drone flights. Mm -hmm. So. Um, they don't have the, the right gear for our specific um, case, mm -hmm. but really the, fu the future is in this automated uh, system, fully automated, that the inspection of the tank um, is based on <laughs> the press of a button. Yeah. The drone flies out, does this circle mm -hmm. with the battery checks and everything, um, um, gets the data, uploads it, yeah. it goes into the tool, um, there's always, there's, uh, uh, for the ones who believe that AI will take over, um, there's always uh, a human necessary yeah. in this chain. Yeah. Yeah. Supervising the, and they supervise. ultimately taking the decisions because at the end of the day, and, and I think you make a really good point with uh, Renko. So in, in the last webinar with iFly, uh, you know, like we, we saw that he was also saying, you know, we, we are moving, the companies is moving into like a more data processing, uh, you know, uh, mining the data and kind of like delivering like an added value. Um, uh, I think he also shows some um, uh, computer learning or machine learning for the uh, anomalies, uh, if I recall correctly, uh, on the online platform. So it's like, it's very similar oh, okay, for cool. different so look, markets. You, uh, you know, if you, you could fly a drone by clicking a button and like doing out, like, a full automated at the end of the day i think drones are going to become a commodity like you obviously yeah. add a value in the expertise of uh, doing those missions that are extremely challenging obviously mm -hmm. but ultimately it's yeah. just yeah i think you will the yeah. more automated sure and yeah, those will be the more interesting projects because because mm -hmm. there's a lot of terrain um where you don't just fly over and have this nadir uh, photo said no, but you have to fly okay, in between so of the things if it's allowed. Um, so yeah, there, there's a lot, a, a lot of um, uh, stuff. Automation mm. will probably not be able to do because of errors and because of uh, uh, mm -hmm. dangers. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we'll see in the future. Yeah, really cool. I think I think we we ne definitely need to schedule the, the next webinar for maybe in six months from now and see how much you guys have uh, improved the workflow and, and you know keep keep an eye on on your um improvements <laughs> yeah sounds good <laughs> yeah <laughs> is there anything else that you wanted to present uh milo um not really okay. uh the next step would be showing that uh once i run the uh the program it does it every everything automatically but that's really not very interesting and I didn't go in depth into every setting of the, um, um, yeah, of the program. For instance, mm -hmm. that you can select a high quality or low quality. Um, but it's really like it's it's difficult to show um, the more specific things to a broad audience and make it still uh, interesting. Yeah. So let's leave it at this. But I think you make a good point, and I think that it would be uh, useful for us to. I'm I'm taking notes, and we will definitely ask the technical team to maybe do a more technical session. Um, you know, if you guys are interested, um, so for for everyone to get on top of this, because I think this is a brilliant 
and a very unknown feature of contest capture. <laughs> yeah. So so yeah. yeah. Yeah, if they could do it and then maybe just show like uh, um, parallel processing, mm. um, sending data to multiple uh, engines. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like maybe that will be interesting as well for okay. really large um, data sets, projects yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and bulk, uh, yeah, yeah, bulk processing. That's very good feedback. Uh, thank you so much. Um, I, I think then we can um, maybe, yeah, I think that's, that's most of it. I, I actually, I'm gonna take over and um, take a few John minutes Paul. for um, just to finish with the presentation. Let me just go uh, here. To my presenter. There we go. Is that showing already? No. Let me just share my screen. Okay, it should yep. be showing now. Um, I actually wanted to mention um, because I I know most of the guys that are in the call actually are uh, they they already have contest capture, so I'm not gonna go over the the whole virtuosity thing. But um, something that I wanna highlight about virtuosity is the fact that um, you know we provide the um, uh, the experts, the professional services. So they, we call them the keys. So with the subscription, um, let me see if I have them here. Yeah. So you get the, um, uh, for the reality modeling packages, the three keys. So basically you can exchange these for professional services, look like, I think maybe like two hours of mentoring for every key. I can't remember the exact number, but um, what I'm trying to say is that I think this, this is very useful for cases like yours, um, um, Milo, you were, um, smart enough to do this on your own, uh, but some other people might not have the, uh, like if I think of myself, I don't have any experience in coding, I understand a little bit, but I, this will be overwhelming for me to uh, to implement um, on my own. Um, and every project is different, so even though we, we might, you know, do a webinar or, or tutorials, it will never, you know, give you the right step by step for your specific settings and for your specific projects. Um, so this this will be a fantastic like that. That is the the added value of the virtual subscription that it will be like an ongoing journey with you um, guys. So we will provide you with like mentoring and like uh, on demand training to help you achieving those goals. Um, so I think this is something to take note um, for for everyone, and don't hesitate to reach out to me if you wanna know more about this. Um, so yeah, I think that's all from my side. Um, I'm gonna launch a quick poll just to um, ask you guys if um, you like to learn more about reality modeling works, just um, just to kind of like not. Uh, bother you if uh, you know you're okay with your existing uh, license or you want more information about this virtuosity um, reality modeling package so that would be great and I will definitely get in touch with you in the next days and um, perfect let me just close the poll because I think everyone replies um, wonderful uh, so I think that's all from my side uh, Milo do you um, have anything else or Nope. Perfect. So I think with Thank that, you. we can close this. Thank you so, so much, Milo, for your presentation. That was really, really cool. Um, and everyone, thank you so much for joining uh, today. We'll have another webinar in a couple of weeks. Uh, we'll be um, sharing more details soon, but stay tuned and um, happy processing, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.